With the Second World War, Ansett's business fortunes were to take a new turn. Ansett abandoned its commercial operations and secured very profitable military contracts, ferrying troops from Sydney to Townsville and overhauling aircraft for the RAAF and the Americans. With the bombing of Darwin, Ansett came to the rescue in evacuating the civilian population, using two of his Lockheeds. As a result of its wartime activities, Ansett became financially stable and was ready to invest deeply in post-war operations. Once the war was over, Reg Ansett faced his toughest fight with the Department of Civil Aviation. The department had given its pre-war interstate routes to ANA, leaving Reg out in the cold. Every day by the clock, Reg Ansett, or RM as he was known to his close associates, left his home at Mount Eliza to set off for work. His wife would wave him off. He was a stickler for punctuality and would expect all his employees to live by his code. Reg was the only businessman in Melbourne to come to work this way. Time was money to him. His helicopter would be met at the Yarra helipad by a chauffeur-driven car to take him to his Swanston Street office. Reg Ansett ran a very tight ship. He was a conservative man, always wearing a white shirt and traditional gold cufflinks, his hair slicked back and worn fairly short. Most of the big decisions were made by him. He disliked yes-men. He spoke regularly of his responsibility to the company's 45,000 shareholders as though he was more a custodian than owner. But he held only 3% of the Ansett stock. He was a very demanding boss, and, uh, but he set, a, uh, he set the example with the drive and the determination and the grit to do whatever he wanted to do. If necessary, he used to say to me, well, what do you mean you can't do that? The rules don't allow it. Get the rules changed. This was his attitude, you know, and right through life. And it certainly paid dividends. In 1944, the Labour Party had plans to nationalise the airlines. Reg loathed the thought of government and bureaucracy getting in the way of private enterprise. Bloody bureaucracy, he would shout. But he knew he had to work in with government, even though he never entirely trusted politicians. He diversified into hotels, television, finance companies, mining, and even a ballpoint pen company. He opened up Daydream and Hayman Islands using the giant Sikorsky helicopters. And in New Guinea, he found many new customers and carried their excess baggage. You might be surprised by what we've got in our catalogue on our streaming platform at www.historicalmachines.tv. We've got the full version of this documentary, which you're sure to enjoy, and there's a whole lot more as well. So jump over there, grab yourself a free seven-day trial, check out what's in the catalogue, and watch the full version of this movie while you're there.